in Nyingma art, there are, there's a few different common themes that we find <clears throat> that relate to uh, deities and relate to teachers. But one of the really the most important and the most common is Padmasambhava himself and his eight forms. There are eight special forms that are commonly depicted in painting and mural and made as sculpture that relate to Padmasambhava and his life story. And that's where these eight forms come from. They come out of the Terma version, out of the different uh, Nyangro Nima Osar Guru Chowang, uh, the Pema Katang text of the Terma story of uh, Padmasambhava and his life prior to going to Tibet in the 8th century. Now, these eight forms are, are often depicted as secondary figures around a central subject of Padmasambhava himself, uh, but they're also commonly made as a set of nine paintings with the main form, the general form of Padmasambhava as the, as the central really the central painting, and then four compositions on either side, and the central figure of each of the compositions is one of these eight forms. Now, there are also other forms. There's, <clears throat> we have these eight, which specifically relate to his life story, but then there's also, there's also 12, and these also relate to the 12 months of the year and the special 10th uh, day uh, anniversary each month for Padmasambhava. And then we have different forms and they also relate to, to 12 different events in Padmasambhava's life story. But the eight are the most important and what we really see in, in art. And, and they can look very different because what we have is we have... Uh, we have one form which looks like a Buddha. So remember, we have 11 basic appearances of uh, figures in Himalayan art. Buddha is the first. So, so we have Shakya Senge is the first in, in terms of appearance. Then we have two forms of Padmasambhava who appears a, as if he's a king, uh, Loden Chokse and Pema Gyalpo. Then we have one figure in monastic appearance uh, where he's a monk and he's often wearing a, a red pandita hat and this we can just call Pema Jungne or Pandita Pema Jungne. Then we have uh, a form that's in Siddha appearance. Now Siddha appearance is like uh, a wild Mahasiddha wearing bone ornaments, a tiger skin, uh, lower garment, bone ornaments. Holding a, holding a trident in one hand. Uh, then we have a uh, peaceful deity appearance, and then we have Udiana Dorje Chang, and this form is uh, very similar to Vajradhara of the Sarma system, uh, except usually he's with a consort in the, in the Udiana Dorje Chang appearance. Then we have uh, two wrathful appearances. We have uh, Senge Dradok, and here he's He's uh, blue in color, extremely wrathful, holding a Vajra in the upraised right hand, a wrathful gesture in the left, and very commonly confused with Vajrapani. Then we have, for wrathful figures, we, then we have Dorje Drolo. Dorje Drolo is not usually confused because it, it's a very unique figure, uh, very wrathful, maroon in color, uh, and holding a, a a peg, a three-sided peg, a kila or a purba in the left hand and also standing atop uh, a pregnant tigress. So, so it's a very wrathful form and really quite unique. So, so these are the eight forms and they can appear as a single composition, a single painting with Padmasambhava at the center and then these eight forms as secondary figures surrounding or they can appear in a nine painting composition, um, often telling with various vignettes, telling the story, life story of Padmasambhava. So being able to recognize or knowing that these uh, eight forms exist is very important because this is one of the main themes uh, that you find in Nyingma art. And yes, you also find these eight forms as uh, sculpture and, and murals 
and there are uh, many sets. There, there are many more sets of paintings than there are that we know of of sculpture, uh, but it is a very dominant theme in Nyingma painting. <laughs>